And just when you think you've seen it all, Blender add-on developers continue to push the boundaries of what Blender geometry nodes can do. And today we're looking at a beautiful rain generator tool made available by Antoni Bagatini. And this by far is one of the best procedural rain generators I've seen. So for anyone who would like to get this or probably play with it, links to this is going to be in the description. I'll bring you over to the Gumroad or the Blender market where you can get it. This generator allows you to generate detailed rain scenes with high performance and it generates realistic splashes with visually accurate collision. This comes with a demo scene, a a couple of control, a default water shader, and you can also have collision targets tied to any object of your choice. So once you proceed to download this, this comes with two files. The very first file that you get is the rain generator, and then you get a demo file. The next thing which you probably need to do is to fire up Blender. So once you have Blender open, go over to edit, go over to preference, go over to the file path and add the rain generator to the asset libraries. So once we get all that going, the next thing which we need to do is drag in a brand new panel and we can roll all the way and switch this to the asset browser. So once we switch this to the asset browser, click on the drop down, go over to your rain generator. In my case, I named it the Rainmaker, And then you will see that we have a couple of assets that you can work with. You have assets ranging from 100, 50, 20, 10, 5, 2, all the way to 2 meters. So I'm just going to drag in a 5 meter rain generator so you can see that. And you can see how high that is. Bounces all the way back. Press the playback. And you can see that bouncing really, really well on that surface. Looking pretty. So some of the things that you may need to know is this. That if you like this to rain a bit faster, slower, all of these controls have been made available for you. So if you go over to the modifier section where you get to find the properties, you can proceed to play with them. So this is how it has been put together. So it just makes sense to go through and see them. And something which I did notice is depending on the rain tool that you're playing with, you have a different set or organization for the properties that you'll be playing with. So in this case, if we like to play with the density, of course we can. We can just go ahead and increase this density to about 1,900. And if we bounce this all the way back, press the playback button, you can see that if we like to increase the speed, of course we can. So we can make this a thousand speed and that will become super, super fast. So you can see that and the splashing is looking so great. You can also play with the splash shape. So if we go over to the section, we can distort the splash shape how we want it to be. You can play with the height of the splash, the distance of the splash, depending on what you want to create, you get some very interesting result. And this cuts across every other asset that you have right here. Now let's take a look at the example file that comes with this. So we do have a car demo. So I'm just going to punch in this one and click on open, don't save. And we have that scene right here. So once we open this up, you can see it's exactly the same rain tool that we just looked at. Let's just go all the way back to the previous and switch this back to layout. And let's just go through and join this. Okay. And yeah, we're just going to get rid of that and go over to our properties. Nice. So like I mentioned earlier, depending on the rain tool that you're dealing with, the settings are a little bit different. So you need to keep this in mind. So once we have this ready, if we press the playback, notice that we have the rain bouncing and is a bit slow. If you want to fasten this up, of course you can. So you can bounce this all the way back, go all the way down here to where you're going to find the speed. So this is where the speed is. So at this point, I'm just going to increase this speed by say one, bounce this back, press the playback button and that it doesn't really show that. So let's just make this about five, for example, that's going to be a bit quick. So let's bounce that back, press the playback button and you can see it's a little bit too quick. And just in case you're working with this and you get to notice that it times out really fast, this is where you get to increase some of the density and quantity of rain that you want. So in this case, I'm just going to go in and I'll increase the quantity of rain that we want. So let's just set that all the way to 600. So we need a whole lot of rain coming from this part. So we can set that all the way up and we can go through and press the playback button and you can see this just happen. So what if you like another object to interact with this? So I'm just going to drop in a cylinder. Now what you need to do is you need to tap M on the keyboard and put this object in a container. It has to be in a container else the rain tool will probably not see it properly. So we go over to the new container or new collection and I'm just going to call this tube. So once we have this set to tube, click on OK. We have that. So if I go through and I select the rain tool, we can go all the way down and we can throw in the tube. And right now you'd notice that automatically we have some more stuff happening there. You would also notice that we no longer have 
the rain interacting with the car anymore. So if we bounce this all the way back and press the playback button, you'd notice that we no longer have this. Of course, it's splashing on the floor, but you don't see it interact with this. Now, if you want the both of them to interact, it is worth mentioning that these two objects needs to exist in the same container. Failure to do that, the only one that is existing within a container at a given time, that's the only one that the rain tool actually sees and this is how it works. So once you have this ready, you can now proceed to start rendering and get some very interesting stuff. And speaking about rendering, all of your shading has been done for you. So if you're thinking about the shading for the rain, all of that has been done. You can just simply fire up cycles and get your perfect render happening. And this is super, super cool. So this is more like it. For those who've been thinking about creating some amazing rain splashes, I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Pretty realistic ones, getting all of that rain dripping stuff happening for your next CGI project or your next animation or your next, you know, compositions or maybe your next renders. Then this is an amazing tool. And I think this is the best procedural rain tool I've seen come from Blender. So just in case you've been looking for something like this, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.